Dr. Uptown here. We're back with the Ruger Mark 1 and we're going to see how things go today. <clears throat> Give you a little background here. Uh, we've already had this pistol apart a lot and basically what we run into was the more we cleaned it the worse things got. So basically what happened with this was as we took it apart after our initial cleaning, we took it apart further and we found um, some other issues and as we continued to clean it, we continued to induce more and more malfunctions. So like I say, we've got this thing back to functioning almost to the point that I'm really afraid to take it apart again. but. I think uh, for the sake of argument in the video we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll hope that everything works okay but we are going to uh, replace this extractor spring and the ex extractor itself with a, uh, a VQ one and uh, we'll just see how that goes so anyway we'll go ahead and get started here of course first thing we'll do is go ahead and remove our grips pull our magazine out next And we will go back through all of our reassembly here. Like I say, this thing has been a part and we have had all the springs except that extractor spring have uh, been replaced. So we're in fairly good shape as far as that goes. But like I say, we do continue to have a problem with the extractor spring detent clocking. Set this frame aside for the moment. Go ahead I think the first thing we'll do is just go ahead and replace this extractor spring in the extractor just to get that out of our way. As I worked on this, the one thing that I did find that I thought was kind of interesting was was this extractor is basically the same type of design. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but basically this thing just sits in there and I was just able to take it and lift it and rotate it out. Anyway, this extractor design is basically the same design as you have with the Remington 597. Now, <clears throat> what you'll see on this detent, I'll go ahead and pull it up a little closer, is, is it does have this grooved area. The way that is, there we go, it does have this grooved area, and the way that is designed to go is on top of the extractor like so but what's happening is is that thing was clocking around and doing like this so hopefully with this new spring we'll solve this problem when I did take this entire mechanism out of the bolt the first time that spring was basically just one solid piece of rust
clean the rest and everything out and then like I say basically what we ran into after that was the thing began to clock on us so apparently when the spring was full of rust the rust was holding it into position I'll get a good view of this or not, but like I say, the extractor will just drop in as that spring and detent come forward. It should hold the extractor in a position. It doesn't allow it to clock. Okay, so that's got the new extractor and extractor spring placed. Basically, I think the only way we're going to be able to go out and actually give that a very true test is to just do some range time with it. What... Uh, because that's that's what we found has just kind of been the issue is things will seem to work just fine while we're doing our tabletop work but then once we get it out and actually do some firing is when we start having our malfunction so to start with this, what we're going to do is go ahead and remove this hammer pin. What this hammer pin will do when we remove it is it will release the thumb safety, the hammer, and then this transfer bar. So we'll go ahead and take those parts out, just flip the transfer bar out of our way. Here's our trigger, or our hammer, and then our hammer bushing. And then you can see that the thumb safety is just in the frame loose at that point. So we'll go ahead and take that out. The only thing that's under spring tension is this transfer bar, which is held in place by this small detent and spring right here. So like I say, we've already replaced all the springs. The next thing that is left is the sear, which is right here, and then it has a spring that also goes on this pin here. So what we'll do is go ahead and push this pin out that holds the sear in place. And go ahead and remove those parts out so that you can see them. This would be the sear, and then the sear spring. Now, to get these parts back in, like I say, and then that basically breaks it down to your basic frame. The one thing we're not going to do is go ahead and remove this trigger, because the pin that holds the trigger on the Mark 1s is held in place by a snap ring. And you play hell getting that snap ring out. But if you need to, you can remove that snap ring and then remove the trigger assembly and then that will allow you to remove that trigger bar. But we're not really concerned with that. We're just going to kind of give you the basics on this for right now. So to go ahead and reassemble, we'll just slightly place the sear pin back into place. And we'll go ahead and replace the sear spring which will go down into the frame and the easiest thing that I found to do was to go ahead and install it onto the pin just by just partially inserting that pin in and then setting the spring down over the top of it. Now the one thing I did do is I missed the spring needs to go under 
this small pin that's right here in the frame. I don't know if you can see that very well, but that spring actually goes underneath that pin, and that's one thing that I did miss this time around. So we'll go ahead and get it installed back in there with it under that cross pin this time around. And this is probably the most fiddly task of the reassembly. Because the Mark I does not have a bolt hold open or a bolt release lever, there are just not nearly as many pins as there are on the Mark II or Mark III models. You don't have as many pins, you don't have as many springs to deal with as you do on those other two models. So that makes the Mark I a bit easier missed it makes the mark one a bit easier to work on so after we've got that spring installed on the sear pin right here and you want the short leg of the spring toward the back of the frame then we're ready to go ahead and install the steer and this portion is not that tough uh, because it's pretty straightforward it's just getting the holes to line up but basically just come in like this get in on the pin and then start working your pin through the sear you can come from the other side with a punch sometimes that helps out just to line the parts up in the holes. I want your pins back in place. That's all there is to it. Now, this becomes the more interesting part is to go ahead and get the hammer back in place. To start with, we'll go ahead and put our spring and our detent for the transfer bar back in. And that will spring load the transfer bar. Next, we're going to take our sear and run it forward. The first thing we have to do is install the safety lever into place and it has a small detent at the back of it which will allow it to click in. While you're holding that you then have to flip the transfer bar down and you want to go ahead and put your hammer with the bushing side into the transfer bar and then slide that into the approximate location that you're going to need. Then you have to try and have all the holes lined up and start working your pin in to place. Once you got your pin lined up with all your holes, then you should be able to advance your pin into the frame and into place. Now, this is where we ran into continuous trouble before, but as you can see our transfer bar seems to be able to travel up and down to engage and disengage the sear. This works basically as a disconnector along with transferring your trigger your trigger to the sear. So now that we've got this back in together We'll go ahead and reinstall our barrel. I'll go ahead and 
pull the bolt out. But we'll go ahead and reinstall our barrel onto the frame. And you should line up the back of the receiver at or just slightly past the frame location. Then we're ready to reinstall our bolt. Once our bolt is installed, then we'll come back with our bolt stop disassembly lever. Snap it into place, then we'll flip our frame over to engage our hammer transfer bar into the mainspring. We'll flip it closed, and I think we've got our function fully. Obviously, we're not going to know this until we take it out to the range, but we are recocking and we are firing with the trigger pull. So, we'll put our grips back on. And, with any luck, we'll get this thing out to the range and get some rounds through it. And hopefully that will have solved all of our problems with this. Like I say, the biggest issue we had with this was this thing had probably never been cleaned. And the more we cleaned it, the worse the thing got. So hopefully now that we've got it cleaned and we've got it functioning... hopefully a hundred percent now on the table we'll be able to take this Ruger Mark 1 out to the range and get some range time in with some shooting time so just again give you an overview like I say we went through did a complete detail strip did a complete detail cleaning replaced all of the springs and replaced the extractor on this Ruger Mark 1. I. I hope you guys find this interesting. We'll talk to you later. You have a good day.